Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Chase Hayden, and you can find out more about me at thehaydeninstitute.com. That's H-A-Y-D-E-N institute.com. Today we're going to be talking about leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is a common presentation among patients in our office because basically it can lead to a whole bunch of different symptoms and conditions uh, in today's society. So leaky gut basically means that the cells of your intestines are, are separating and they're allowing things to pass through them that shouldn't. And when that happens, you allow bacteria, toxins, uh, food particles, and other things that don't belong in your bloodstream to now enter into them without being broken down efficiently or being neutralized. So in leaky gut syndrome, we have a wide variety of symptoms that can pop up from somebody that experiences this. Something diagnosed such as Crohn's or, or colon disease or colon cancer. You can have things like asthma or upper respiratory tract infections. Even people with seizures or multiple sclerosis or schizophrenia. A lot of these symptoms or these presentations can be traced back to a leaky gut. This doesn't mean that the leaky gut is the cause of all these symptoms or all these presentations in everybody, but it's definitely, definitely a contributing factor to why these people continue to return to the symptoms that they are, that are being treated for. So apart from these diagnosed conditions, such as colon cancer, or schizophrenia, or autism, or these other diseases or conditions that have been labeled that also have strong associations with leaky gut, you can just have regular symptoms associated with it as well, such as headaches, acid reflux, heartburn, indigestion, bloating, anal itching, um, constipation, diarrhea, eczema, or rashes on the skin like psoriasis, dry, brittle nails, hair falling out. A lot of these symptoms can also be traced back to a leaky gut because basically when you have inflammation in the gut and you have the cells of the lining of your, of your gut separating, allowing trash to get into the bloodstream that doesn't belong, you start having symptoms elsewhere because that blood is taking that bacteria to different parts of the body or it's taking those undigested food particles to the brain or it's causing these infections to end up at the feet and now you have athlete's foot. It's, it's an entry source to all these different toxins that don't belong in the bloodstream and it's giving them an easy way to get in and start wreaking havoc through the gut system. So basically when we look at leaky gut we have different cells in the body. So these cells here allow your body to digest certain foods. So if we think of your colon just like a big water hose you have the rubber on the outside of the water hose being these cells and in between these cells you have what are known as tight junctions which basically consist of zonulin. Zonulin is the fancy protein name for, for the regulation of these tight junctions between the cells and they regulate what allows the body to absorb or keep out. So this is your gut, this is your mu mucus lining in your gut that absorbs nutrients, these are the cells of the gut wall, these are the tight junctions called zonulin, and this is your bloodstream. Now what happens is when you consume food, it goes through your mouth, down into your stomach, goes into your intestines, starts getting broken down into vitamins and minerals and proteins and fatty acids and they break them down really small so that eventually when they get here to the mucus lining of your gut they can pass through to the cells and through to the tight junctions and then the regulatory body there allows it to then pass through into the blood so now you have vitamin C in your blood or now you have amino acids that are able to enter into the blood and go elsewhere and bind to hormones and whatnot. When this process gets broken down and you start having cells that are much wider apart from each other, things that normally would not pass through the gut lining or through the gut walls are now starting to enter in. So let's take things like bacteria. If you have a spirochete bacteria in your blood, such as Lyme's disease or syphilis, something like that, and now it's able to go through your gut, it passes through the tight junctions where zonulin is no longer working like it's supposed to because you have a big inflammatory process there. And now you have this spirochete enter into your bloodstream because you may have gotten it from just eating something or maybe you, you, you had old food that was left out and it started developing uh, a bacterial overgrowth. Even though traditionally spirochetes come from tick-borne infections, things of that nature. But anytime you have an infection that gets into the bloodstream through the digestion system, through these 
tight junctions, you now have this bacteria that's able to circulate through the blood. And it can be deposited elsewhere, such as the skin, or in the brain, or in the lungs, or in different parts of the body. See, when these zonulin cells are not regulating tight junctions like they should, you get bacterial infestations, or yeast infestations, or even parasites that can slip through the bloodstream and go, I mean, I'm sorry, through the food system, through the digestive tract, and into the bloodstream. This doesn't stop just there. You can also have large undigested food particles like gluten or casein. A lot of our patients that come in that have been diagnosed with autism are aware of the gluten sensitivity that they have or the casein sensitivity that comes from dairy products. So therefore, if you have a leaky gut and you're a child that has autism and food sensitivities or someone that doesn't, like celiacs, and you still have these food sensitivities, the gut system is not able to regulate the tight junctions like it should because the zonulin is not working anymore. And now you have things like gluten that are able to pass into the system. Or casein, or corn, or other food particles that go into the system in an undigested manner. And then you also can have toxins that come in this way as well, whether it's chemicals or metals or dyes, different things that you put into your mouth that should stay within the tube that comes from your mouth to the rectum and never get out, that now is having access into the rest of your body. So once these things get into your blood, they start going out to the rest of your body and start affecting other systems. See, in the colon, we have what is known as your gut-associated lymphoid tissue. It's called G. ALT, gut associated lymphoid tissue. That is the protective membrane, mucous membrane system here in the gut that protects you from infection, from foods that are undigested now getting in through the cells and going into the blood, and also from other uh, infections or infestations of chemicals or, or metals, etc. When that GALT system, that GALT system is defective, it starts allowing this process to break down in other mucus related systems as well. So for example in your lungs you have your BALT system, your BALT system, it's your bronchial associated lymphoid tissue. So basically we see that when someone has a leaky gut they can have things like pneumonia, they can have upper respiratory tract infections, they can have asthma and other lung related symptoms because now we're having this gut associated lymphoid tissue and the bronchial associated lymphoid tissue which are really one and the same from a mucosal membrane in immune system standpoint become infect, uh, affected. We can also have things like your SALT system, your skin associated lymphoid tissue that becomes defective and that's why we get the skin presentations like eczema or psoriasis or dry skin or itchy skin or even the hair that starts coming out or the brittle nails. We can have the NALT system, the NALT associated, I mean the nose associated lymphoid tissue. That's where you start having the sinus infections and the headaches and the mucus buildup here where it becomes impacted and you start growing fungus or bacteria or molds inside the sinus cavities and you have to have surgery to get these out. So as we can see through this system when the associated lymphoid tissue systems are disrupted we now have easy access to a bunch of different parts of our body. And it doesn't stop just there. The blood brain barrier is also a system that's regulated by tight junctions that should protect your brain from anything getting inside of it. But when the tight junctions are disrupted through the gut and through the lungs and through the sinus cavities and through the skin, it's safe to assume that that's also why the blood-brain barrier is becoming affected as well. And you can develop things like schizophrenia. It's how autism also has a gut-associated uh, parallel between the colon and the brain. You can have people with Parkinson's, for example, where they're now, in Australia, there's a doctor doing studies where he's doing fecal transplants. Well, stay with me for a second. This guy is taking feces from healthy individuals and re-implanting them into his patients with Parkinson's, and he's noticing changes through tremors, through cognitive function, through facial expression, etc. Because of the, the association between your gut-associated lymphoid tissue and your blood-brain barrier. So as this doctor in Australia is now introducing good things back into the body, those good things are then going up and repairing other aspects as well, such as the blood-brain barrier. And he started to see changes with his Parkinsonian patients. So when we have symptoms, it doesn't always mean that that symptom is coming from the specific spot where we feel it. So just because I have something like asthma doesn't mean it's a lung problem. 
or pleurisy or Parkinson's or whatever the condition or symptom may be, it doesn't always mean it's a specific symptom to that area of the body. There can be far stretching or far implicating results from these different systems such as the leaky gut that we're seeing here. So a leaky gut has an effect on many parts of the body including the lungs, the brain, the skin, the digestive tract, the, the sinuses, and the other associated immune systems of the gut of the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. So what do we do about this? We now know what a leaky gut does. We now know how its effect on our body takes place. How do we test for it? How do we know if you have leaky gut, if I have leaky gut, or if your friend who's always complaining of symptoms has leaky gut? Well the best way to, to screen for it is through a test that is performed by Metametrics. So Metametrics is a testing company that deals with a lot of different screening procedures for patients, whether it's stool samples or saliva samples, hair analysis, etc. But they have a stool sample that's called the GIFX panel. So the GIFX panel basically screens for leaky gut as well as infections and infestations such as bacteria, yeast, parasites, molds, etc. It checks to see if there are food sensitivities such as gluten and how the body is able to tolerate gluten. It, it checks for short chain fatty acid absorption, so how your body is able to absorb through the mucus lining, etc. And basically it puts all of this into one stool sample to give us a good idea as to how your body is functioning from a gut standpoint. See, if we have a leaky gut, and if we're sus uh, susceptible to infestations such as yeast or parasites, then there's going to be a wide variety of symptoms that may present. Just the other day I had a woman come in she is epileptic. She has grand mal seizures uh, frequently. She has bad distension problems in her gut. So every night she feels like she has real sore belly pains. It's, it starts to turn hard as a rock. She has anal itching. She grinds her teeth. She has been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and Epstein-Barr. She has just got a whole lot of stuff going on with her. So we ran a metametric stool panel on her and it came back with her being sensitive to gluten. She's not absorbing her short chain fatty acids, so she's having a, an absorption problem. It also showed pancreatic and liver stress, showed parasite and yeast infestations in her body, but it showed that her good bacteria and bad bacteria were relatively normal still. So through all of her symptoms, we were able to look at a simple test that was able to identify what was going on with her, what infections were present, what we could do to improve her digestion from her carbohydrate and her fat digestion and, and what we can do to support her from a nutritional standpoint. So a metametric stool sample is a great way to screen for something like leaky gut syndrome and why you continue to have your symptoms even though you've gone on antibiotics or even though you've taken the medications for years to try and treat your symptoms if those symptoms continue to come back or if you've seen other doctors and those symptoms are still present that's your body telling you something. So screening for leaky gut syndrome is a great way to look and see why you're having those symptoms and what you can do about it. So now we know that the leaky gut associates with not only the colon, so not only are patients that come in with colon problems that benefit from leaky gut screening, but also other patients that have brain problems, that have lung problems, have sinus problems and headaches, and skin issues as well. So the leaky gut is a first step in our office where we start screening so that we can make sure that we are supporting your body from a holistic standpoint because if you're eating three to six times a day and you're not able to absorb your nutrients or if you're allowing other things to get in that shouldn't belong that's going to really put a hiccup in our road to progression so if you have any questions please feel free to give me a call my name is Dr. Chase Hayden you can find out more about me at the Hayden Institute so that is H-A-Y-D-E-N institute.com we're here in Houston, Texas and we'd love to help you out have a great day.